Welcome everyone and in this episode we're going to be talking about the help to buy shared ownership scheme. Now this is another scheme from the government that helps non-homeowners get onto the property ladder. Now I really wanted to do a video on this because there seems to be a lot of misconceptions about how the scheme actually works so I wanted to set the record straight plus there are some new changes coming in for the scheme from April 2021 onwards so we're going to be looking at what those changes are as well. So without further ado I'm Kozan from Financial Madness helping you be better with your money. So what exactly is the shared ownership scheme? As I mentioned, it is a scheme run by the government and this allows homeowners to buy just a proportion of the house while paying rent on the remaining proportion to a housing association. Now, under the current scheme, you can buy between a quarter to three quarters of the property. And that means you only pay for a mortgage for the share that you own while you pay rent on the remaining share to a housing association. And where applicable, you would also have to pay some service charges. Now, one of the myths about this one is people think that you have to live with someone else. This is completely not true. You are only buying it with someone else, but you are paying the rent to a housing association, which is just a company. So you can indeed, in fact, buy it on your own, or indeed, if you are buying it with a friend, family member, or a partner, you can also do that too. One of the great benefits of this scheme is because as the buyer is only buying a proportion of the property, they only need to get a mortgage that covers that proportion, which means the deposit will be a lot lower than if they bought it outright, making it more affordable for more and more people. Once you do buy your share of the property, you do have the option Option to buy more shares in the future. Now this is a process commonly known as staircasing, which allows you to gradually build up the amount of shared ownership that belongs to you. And you can indeed staircase all the way up to 100%, which means that you will then eventually exclude the housing association from the deal and the property will solely belong to you. Also note that most of these homes under this scheme will be new builds, but some can be resold through a housing association. So as you know me, I always like to demonstrate things with an example. So let's Let's just look at a typical example of a house under the shared ownership scheme just so you can really understand how this works. So say there is a property currently on the market of £400,000 and you want to buy a 35% share in the property. Now this meets the minimum requirements which is 25% all the way up to three quarters although this is changing in the new scheme but I will mention that a little bit later on. So 35% of the property means that you'll be buying a share of the property that is worth £140,000 and it's this £140,000 that you need to get a mortgage on. Say you manage to get a 95% mortgage, so you only need 5% as a deposit, and 5% of 140,000 equals 7,000 pounds. So this is how much you need as a deposit. Comparing if you actually got 5% on the property in total, you can see there is a massive difference, which shows you that through this scheme, getting a property is a lot more affordable. And your monthly payments could look a little bit like this. And I got this information from LQ Homes. Now you will have to pay for a mortgage, so that means your mortgage payment can be something like £775.50. You'll also have to pay rent to the housing association who owns 65% of the property. And in this example, this works out to be £595.83. You'll also have to pay a service charge to the housing association for the general upkeep of the property. And this works out to be £150 per month. So in this example, the total amount will then be £1,521.33. Now it can be argued that even though you are able to buy a property at such a low mortgage rate, the ongoing cost of keeping this up is actually quite expensive. So I would encourage you to do the math and shop around, look at other different schemes to see if the shared ownership is the best option for you. Because there is quite a few schemes out there and they're all tailored to meet a certain need. So just make sure that this is the perfect one for you before you go any further. So who is eligible for the scheme? Now, all the details I'm going to mention are only applicable for England. There are slightly different rules for Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. So to be eligible for the scheme, scheme here in England you have to be at least 18 years or older. Your combined household income must be less than £90,000 if you're living in London and that is £80,000 if you're living outside of London. So unlike other schemes this scheme isn't just restricted to first-time buyers although first-time buyers are still eligible but the criteria states that you just cannot be a homeowner. So even if you've had a home in the past but you don't have one currently you are still eligible for this scheme. Now if you are someone that is a homeowner but you're in the process of selling your property you can still be eligible you just have to make sure that your house is sold just before you purchase the home under the shared ownership scheme 
It's also important to note that because this scheme is open to a lot of people here in the UK, there is a priority system. So priority is given to members of the military and priority is given for those that are looking to purchase in a borough that they have lived in or worked in for a significant amount of time. So what are the new changes? So in September last year, I saw an announcement from the government that they were going to do a shakeup to the current shared ownership model. And this new model will be implemented from the beginning of April 2021 and will be last for the next five years, so expiring in 2026. So the first change is that they will be lowering the minimum shares required to get onto the scheme. So as I mentioned earlier, under the current scheme, you need to at least purchase 25% of the property. In this new scheme, that is being reduced to 10%, thus drastically decreasing the amount of mortgage that you will need to take out, and therefore you won't need as much deposit money to also get onto the property ladder as well. Therefore, under this new scheme, it's gonna be making home ownership far more affordable than previous. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. The next changes they've done is to the way that they do staircasing. Now remember, staircasing refers to the gradual buying up of shares of your own property with the eventual hope that you may get up to 100%. So under the current scheme, you can only staircase in 10% chunks. So taking the example earlier where I mentioned I had 35% of a property, if I wanted to staircase to the next level, the minimum would be up to 45% of the property. Now this drew major criticisms from those that are currently involved in the scheme, and that is because staircasing doesn't just involve me paying the additional amount to own more shares of the property. There are far more costs involved every time I want to staircase. This includes surveyor fees, admin fees, legal fees, and some other fees as well, which meant staircasing was actually quite an expensive option because you had to pay these fees every time you wanted to staircase. So it didn't become a viable option for many in the scheme currently. Now under the new scheme, they are changing the minimum staircasing requirements of 10% to 1%. So now I can staircase in 1% chunks. So taking the example earlier, if I earn 35%, if I wanted to staircase, I can go up to 36%. However, there is a slight difference on how the fees are applied depending on the type of staircasing that you do. Now, if I staircase using the 1% rule, then the fees are drastically reduced. Now, this is mainly due to the fact that the government have waived the need for you to get a surveyor to do a valuation on your property. So instead, they're going to use the local house price index to value your property when you want to buy more shares. Also, admin fees are not included as well. Now, it's really important to understand that this reduction in cost is only applicable if I staircase at 1%. If I decide to staircase 2%, 3%, 5% or even higher, I am now back to paying the costs associated with the previous model. So I'll have to pay for the surveyor fees, I have to pay the admin fees, I have to pay all the legal fees as well. So you really have to actually do some math to see, okay, is it worth me staircasing 1%? The fees will be slightly lower, but I'll actually have to staircase a lot more compared to if I save my money and I can staircase in one big chunk instead. So you do have to work out if it is actually indeed a cheaper alternative, because unfortunately it is not as straight forward as you might think. Now the next change that they're introducing is introducing a 10 year period where you, the buyer, are not responsible for paying any home repairs or maintenance costs associated with the property. That will all be covered by the housing association. Now, when I first read this, I was actually really surprised. I thought, wow, this is actually a really, really good benefit to the shared ownership scheme. And that is because one of the criticisms under the current model is that even though a buyer may not own 100% of the property, they are still responsible for covering 100% of the service charge on that property, which in my opinion is really, really unfair. And I know that is shared among a large majority of people in the scheme. So when I saw this, I thought, oh wow, okay, this is gonna be a way to try and rectify that result. Unfortunately not. This new change doesn't actually in fact have anything to do with the service charge. Now the 10 year grace period is only covering damages to the external fabric of the building and the whole structure of the building. So this is actually quite specific. Now I'll put a link in the description box so you can see what is actually covered in this 10 year period and what is not. Unfortunately for major household appliances such as the sink, uh, your oven, your fridge, they are not included in these home repairs, which is a great shame because one of the reasons why you do pay a service charge 
charge is to cover for maintenance and repairs to the building. So them introducing this 10 year grace period, for me, doesn't actually make much sense. I think on the label, it sounds really great, but if you actually look into the detail, it doesn't actually really give much to the home buyer. Now they've also made changes in how you can resell your property, but I'll just touch on that in a moment. Firstly, I just want to give a bit more detail on when this new scheme is actually being introduced. Now, I know I said earlier that the scheme is planned to come in from April 2021. However, when I went online and looked at the consultation report for this new scheme, it's actually not that straightforward. So I'm just gonna show you on the website right now. So this will be linked in the description box down below. But if we go to point 26, they give a bit more detail on when this scheme is coming into force. Now, uh, we'll start on here. So the Secretary of State for Housing Communities, blah, 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 setting this expectation for all shared ownership homes that receive planning permission from April 2021. This will align it with the new delivery of the new model in the Affordable Homes Program 2021 to 2026. This means that this new model will only be applicable to houses that will get planning permission from April 2021 onwards. So if I understand how a building is built, you first have to get planning permission and then the building work commences. So if they can only get planning permission from April 2021 at the earliest, that means we do have to give them some time to actually build the house. So we're probably not going to see houses that are using this scheme until maybe the very end of this year or even as far as early next year in 2022, which is actually a really great shame. And I think it's quite misleading to say that this scheme is coming in in April 2021. It also says below that we recognize that many developers will have secured land and will have been preparing planning permission under different assumptions. Therefore, we'll be introducing a transitional arrangement to assure as far as possible that the planned pipeline of delivery is not adverse impacted by this new expectation. So there does seem to be some effort from the government to try and transition some houses that are being built under the old scheme and move them under the new model. But there isn't much information on how this is going to work and if this is actually achievable. So we can only really assume that only new builds from April 2021 will be applicable under this scheme. So if you are someone that is quite excited about getting onto the shared ownership scheme under this new rules, sounds like you're going to have to wait a little bit more than a April 2021, I'm afraid. Now, jumping back to how you could resell your property, I'll mention how it works under the current model versus how it works in the new scheme. Now, reselling your property can work in either of the two following ways. So option A, which is a lot more simpler, if you've managed to staircase all the way up to 100%, which means you've managed to exclude the housing association from your property, you can sell the property anytime you like on the open market. So you can go on the estate agents, you can do it online, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the other option is if you haven't managed to staircase to 100%, so the housing association is still involved in the agreement of your property. So to resell, you first actually have to contact the housing association, letting them know that you are wishing to sell the property. And depending on the terms and conditions of your contract, the housing association is given a small amount of time for them to find a prospective buyer on your behalf. And during this time period, you are not allowed to advertise it on the open market. Now, under the current rules, it is a minimum of eight weeks that the housing association has to find someone else. Under the new rules, this is actually being reduced to four weeks. So if a housing association manages to find someone on your behalf, then great, then you don't really have to do much else. If they don't, then you have two options that you can continue with. You can either continue with asking the housing association to look for a buyer on your behalf, or you can go away from the housing association and advertise the property on the market yourself. So going online, going to an estate agent, etc., etc. And any fees incurred by advertising on the market will have to be covered by yourself. Now, once you finally manage to sell on your property, the amount you receive depends on how much of the property you own. So taking the example earlier, say if I still own 35% of the property and I sell it on, I can expect to receive 35% of the revenue generated from selling that property on. If I owned 50%, I would get 50%. If I got 90, 90% will come into my pocket and the remainder would go to the housing association. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on the shared ownership scheme and its changes. Also, if you've got any further questions, let me know as well and I'll happily answer them for you. And as always, if you found this video really useful, please do give this a massive like. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel. And remember, I release a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.